刻むでハモンのビート I've made a variety of videos going over and debunking misinformation in the JoJo community. A lot of the time, these are just parts of the story that people misinterpret or view as plot holes, but a lot of them have to do with just completely fabricated statements of Araki's intentions. There's a lot of examples of this, including one I went over in my last video. Some people claim that Araki originally intended to have a story where Josuke traveled back in time to save himself. In reality, there was never any intention of this, and Josuke's savior was intended to be a random bystander. Another is the idea that Araki originally intended for Dio to have access to every stand ability, but that this was scrapped in favor of the world. Once again, this is not supported by anything that Araki has said and is a completely baseless fan rumor. Since there's so much misinformation like this out there, it's difficult for some people to even know what's real. So in this video, I'd like to go over the list of real scrapped ideas Araki had that never made it into the story. The first example would be the fact that Araki originally intended to end the series at Part 3. When Araki first started JoJo, he says that he planned for there to be three parts. In the first part, he would have Dio defeated, and then in the third, he would return after a long period of time. It was only later that he decided to move forward with Part 4. One scrapped concept from Part 3 was an idea for a neighborhood middle-aged woman selling cigarettes that would have appeared as a stand user in Japan. Araki decided not to include it since the group traveling across the world meant they couldn't stay in a suburban setting for long. Araki thought that if he made a story that stayed in one setting, he could include more local enemies like this. This is what later became the idea for setting Part 4 entirely in one town. In an interview with Kappa Magazine, Araki says that in the early stages of Part 3, only 15 stands were planned to appear. However, since Araki liked the concept so much, he eventually made enough stands that he ran out of Tarot Arcana to use, and began taking their names from other inspirations. In the Jojonium Volume 9 interview, Araki talks about his reasoning behind including Joseph in Part 3. Here he mentions that he originally considered having Joseph leave the group partway through the journey due to his old age. But eventually he abandoned this idea, and Joseph remained in the main cast throughout the entire part. In the flashback of Polnareff meeting Dio, Dio was seen with a parrot perched on his shoulder. This parrot never made another appearance in the manga. However, in the anime adaptation, it was replaced with Pet Shop. This may indicate that the parrot was just an early design for Pet Shop that the anime corrected to keep consistent. In the new spin-off manga, Crazy Diamond's Demonic Heartbreak, the story focuses on Whole Horse who travels to Morio to capture a parrot named Pet Sounds that used to work under Dio. In that story, the parrot had the same trainer as Pet Shop, and is presumably the same parrot we saw in the manga. But since this story is not written by Araki, we can't say for certain if the parrot was originally intended as a separate character, or was just an early version of Pet Shop. Speaking of Whole Horse, Araki says in the Jojonium Volume 10 interview that he actually intended to have him join the group at a certain point. Unlike Kakuen and Polnareff, who were originally created with the intention of joining the main cast, Whole Horse was first written completely as a villain. But Araki liked the character enough that he decided to have him come back a few more times in the story, and even considered letting him join the group. As a sort of test of this concept, one of the chapter covers in the Justice arc features Whole Horse in a group shot alongside the protagonists. Since at that time he was under attack by Enya and actually warns Polnareff about her, this may have been part of the early stages of him becoming an ally. Eventually, however, Araki decided against him joining, since he thought that he would disturb the balance of the group by being too similar to Polnareff. He also says that his stand ability is too powerful to be part of the main cast since it has no real limitations. Later, when Araki did include a gunslinger character as an ally with Mista, he made sure to make his ability more balanced. The character Anne was introduced early in Part 3 as the child tagging along with the group. After a short time, she abruptly left. Araki presumably had more plans with her, but according to him, a child wouldn't fit in with the more dangerous situations the group would end up in, so he decided to send her home. Araki has said that if he were to write the story now, he would have given her a stand ability so she could fit in with the rest of the group. 
In the Jojonium Volume 15 interview, Araki says that he initially didn't plan to add Iggy to the group, and he considered giving his stand the fool to an enemy the group would have encountered. Araki has said that he planned on writing a longer backstory for Kakuin. During the fight with Dio, he showed a brief flashback to Kakuin's past. However, he actually wanted to go further with this and dedicate an entire chapter to his backstory. But he felt that stopping in the middle of the climax of the story to focus on Kakuin's childhood didn't fit, so he shortened it. Similarly, Kira actually had an extended backstory that wasn't shown. In the manga, we know very little about Kira's childhood other than his obsession with the Mona Lisa. His parents are also not shown much, with Kira's father only playing a role as a ghost. However, according to Araki, his childhood would have been shown in more detail. He says that Kira's mother was actually abusive towards him, with his father turning a blind eye to it. This is why his father was protecting him after his death since he felt guilty. Araki eventually decided to avoid telling the story since he thought it would make the audience too sympathetic towards Kira, which would have lessened his impact as an antagonist. Originally, Araki also planned to end the story at Part 4 and move on to a completely new manga. However, he was encouraged by the editors to continue and he did so, and eventually became really attached to the characters in Part 5. When Araki was asked to write a one-shot chapter in 1997, he thought up an original story unrelated to Jojo. However, he decided that it would be better if he included Rohan from Part 4 to serve as the narrator. This is what eventually became the first chapter of Thus Spoke Ashibe Rohan, which later continued with him as the main character. Similarly, when Araki was asked to write a story as a tie-in with Gucci, he says that he originally had something else in mind before he finally settled on Rohan as the protagonist, who he felt was a good fit due to his profession. In the early stages of planning Part 5, Araki actually considered having a female protagonist. His editor said that a female protagonist might not do well in a shonen magazine, so he later altered the character to become Giorno as we know him today. When the character was female, the name Giorno wasn't picked out yet, but Araki's editor says that Giorno's Japanese name, Haruno Shiobana, is feminine, which may have been a leftover of the female character. He also says that Gold Experience's power to grant life may have originated from the fact that the user was originally a woman. The most well-known scrapped idea from Araki is the fact that he originally planned for Fugo to turn out to be an enemy spy. Araki says that Fugo would have been revealed to still be working for the boss after the group betrayed him, and that Giorno would be the one to kill Fugo. However, Araki was going through some depression at the time, and thought that he couldn't bear writing something so dark, so instead he opted to have Fugo leave the group after the disagreement and not return for the rest of the story. Araki says that this is one of the reasons behind the creation of the Part 5 novel Golden Heart Golden Ring, which takes place during Part 5 and shows what Fugo did after leaving the group. Araki himself didn't write the novel, but it seems like he encouraged it to be written to make up for Fugo's absence. In an interview, Araki said that during Part 4, he would get a lot of letters asking him to bring back old characters like Polnareff. At the time, he said that he had no plans to do so. However, later in Part 5, Araki changed his mind and did add Polnareff to the story. He says that this decision came very late, and that he did it thanks to the fans that asked him to do so. In Part 6, the character Anasui initially appeared with a feminine-looking design, before making his full appearance much later with a more androgynous one. Araki has said that his goal with Anasui was to create an androgynous-looking character. This idea may have come to him after the character's first appearance, and is to account for the switch away from the more feminine design. I have a separate video talking about Anasui's gender swap and the misinformation surrounding it, so if you want to see me go fully in-depth on it, check out that video. In the Stone Ocean Bunko Volume 11 author's note, Araki talks about how he came to write the ending of Part 6. He goes over his reasoning and interpretation of the ending, but notably, he also mentions that he changed the ending of the story within the final few chapters. It's unknown what this original ending actually was, but it may have been a more traditional ending compared to what we got, since the change came about from Araki wanting to start over from scratch in a new continuity. In Part 8, Josuke's stand soft and wet was originally planned to have the power to attach screws to objects. Araki decided to change this to the bubble-creating ability that he is seen with in the manga. 
The screw ability was later given to Joshu Higashikata with his stand Nut King call. In one interview, Araki talks about people asking him if Rohan would show up in Part 8. He says that that wouldn't happen, but that another weird mangaka character may appear. For much of the story, people wondered if this character might show up, which ended up not happening. So some kind of manga artist character may have been scrapped throughout the story. Interestingly, when going over the biology of rock humans, it was said that they often have occupations that allow for long breaks, like mangaka. So it's likely that if this character were to be included, he would have been a rock human. And that's all Araki's scrapped ideas that we know about. I really find things like this interesting, since some of them give a glimpse into a completely different kind of story from the ones Araki ended up telling. That's all the scrapped ideas we know of now, but it's possible we'll be seeing more in the future. Soon, the ninth part, tentatively titled Jojo Lands, will begin. So far, Araki hasn't said much about it, but there are a few things he has mentioned. Once when he was asked to write about settings he would like to portray in future stories, Araki expressed interest in a story set in Northern Europe or the Scottish Highlands. In one statement from back during Part 7, Araki says that Morio may play a role in Parts 8 and 9. And at Luca Comics and Games 2019, Araki was asked if Italy would be a setting for a future part, to which he said he would have to do more research but that he'd consider it. Once Part 9 does roll around, we'll end up seeing the setting and know if he scrapped any of these ideas. Talking about Araki's scrapped ideas acts as a really interesting look into his creative process. I think it's a shame that the amount of misinformation in the community prevents these actual behind-the-scenes stories from getting the proper attention. Hopefully you found this video interesting and learned something new. If you have any more ideas for videos going over little-known JoJo information, comment them down below. If you want to be updated on new videos and chapters, join the Hum and Beat Discord using the link in the description. To receive rewards like Discord perks and some uncut videos, you can support the channel on Patreon. And finally, for future videos, subscribe to the channel. Thank you for watching. This is the part of the video where I thank my $5 and up patrons. Thank you to Tony, The Owl God, Alex Ramirez, Doorbell, Monkman, Ashton Joseph Miller, Crayon, Jesper Jansen, Rigo Vids, Zucato, Shane Giger, Sentai, Pumpkin Doge, Marrow, Bailey Smile, Ali, Almighty Quarth, Oof, PBASVG, Kauri, Jojo Agogo, Tucker Gold, Halil, Cake, and Gatlin Grove.